So, you've played the game, earned your loyalty points, and packed your bags. Now, it's time to pick your MGM hotel of choice for your one, two, or three night stay. Now, the question is, which hotel do you pick? Is the Ace of Vegas, the Ace of Vegas. What's good, Spinners and Sharks? Ace of Vegas here to help you spend some of your loyalty points again. So first things first, let's congratulate you on meeting your My Vegas loyalty point goals. Whether it was a thousand LPs or a million before your next trip, you did it. Now, a while back, I had a subscriber ask us to make a list of the MGM properties on the strip and then rank them from number 12 to number one and everywhere in between. And why are we doing the full 12? Because I like to go even further so sit back while we take a crack at the best and the worst MGM hotels on the Las Vegas Strip. Number 12. Circus Circus. Not surprisingly, Circus Circus is number 12 on the list. Circus Circus is barely an MGM property, and it doesn't even have an MLife desk. It's owned by MGM, but not enough to get any real MLife benefits. It's generally considered to be dirty, dated, and downright depressing. Though the steakhouse is great, and it's family friendly, so that's a benefit. Another major issue that drags the property down is it's so isolated on the north end of the Strip, where its only neighbors are the Strat and SLS, so no place to stay if you like to sightsee or casino hop. Either way, it's pretty low on the list. Number 11. Excalibur. The smoky, dated, medieval European counterpart to the Luxor, the Excalibur Hotel comes in at number 11 on our list. It's also widely considered to be in the top 5 worst hotels on every list about the Las Vegas Strip. The property does have a lot of fun activities if you want to visit. The Fun Dungeon, Tournament of Kings, and the Camelot Steakhouse are all amazing distractions, but the hotel sorely needs maintenance and could stand a month-long cleanup, and it's in a pretty lousy spot on the Strip. Not as bad as Circus Circus or the Strat, but the South End is still a bit of a trek to the action. This round table rounds off the number 11 spot on our list. Number 10. Park MGM and Nomad. The Park MGM is a bit of a polarizing property. Either you like it or you don't. You either find the rooms modern and clean or you find them bland and boring. Same as the theme. You either like the clean nature theme or you find it boring and drastically understated. You either like the Italy food court or you can't stand it because it's the same pre-packaged corporate nonsense that you can get everywhere else. You either like the new simple pool or you think you're missing out on the old expansive pool area. I don't think there's anything wrong per se with Park MGM, it's just very much the same as the newer properties and doesn't have much to help it stand out. But it's a nice place to stay and worth the stop if you're by the strip. Let's park the Park MGM at the number 10 spot. Number 9. Luxor. If I could find one word to describe the Luxor Hotel and Casino, I'd have to use the word average. The worst things I can say about it are that the pyramid rooms are small and kinda dated. Also, the breakfast buffet is terrible, but most breakfast buffets in Vegas nowadays are like that, so I can't say too much. The Luxor is a pretty cool hotel within of itself. I mean, who wouldn't want to sleep in a pyramid? The theming is cool, but a lot of it seems to have been removed as the hotel has been refreshed. It's a ways down the Strip, second southmost hotel on the Strip and out of all the MGM properties, so it's not as popular as a few of the other hotels that are themed a bit better and overall more luxurious. That doesn't stop fans of the Lux from patronizing it, and now that Chris Angel is gone, I'm willing to give it another look. The Luxor walks like an Egyptian into the number 9 slot. Number 8. MGM Grand. The MGM Grand is quickly becoming one of my favorite properties, and it's easy to see why. The biggest pros are its outstanding pool, the huge array of nightlife, and the casino is always crowded, and there's always something fun to do there. It hosts the Level Up Bar, one of the few bars on the Strip that offers karaoke every Sunday and Monday, so that's a plus. Dining options are varied, from very budget-friendly all the way up to high-end and everything in between. I'd put down three major downsides to the property. First of all, it's very south on the Strip, right across from New York, New York, and farther south than Park MGM, so it can be difficult to get around. This problem is mitigated slightly by the fact that it has a monorail station, but it's still a little ways out of the way. Speaking of which, everything is out of the way within the property because the MGM Grand is huge. It has the distinction of being the world's largest hotel, or at least it did from 1996 all the way through 2006, and it still holds the distinction of being the third largest hotel in the world. Yes, you heard that right. Not on the Strip, not in America, not in Vegas, the whole world. So once you get back from a night of debauchery, 
you still need an expedition party to survive the trek back to your room. And the final issue is value for money. It's not quite what it used to be. The rooms are nice, but they're very similar to other ones that you can get cheaper. There are times where higher-end hotels like Vidara and Mandalay Bay have superior rooms for a lower price, and those properties have better amenities and a better location in Arya's case too. All those aside, MGM Grand is a far cry from a bad hotel, and it freely roars into a comfortable number 8 spot. Number 7. Vidara at Aria. Speaking of Vidara, Vidara Resort and Spa starts off the number 7 category on this list. It's one of those properties on a property, kind of like Nomad at Park and Delano at Mandalay Bay. But the thing about Vidara is it's almost a little too extra. There's nothing wrong with it, the rooms are gorgeous and it's incredibly clean and modern. I find the location to be great and I frankly don't mind the lack of a casino on site. Others might, but if the two minute wander down to Aria is a little too much for you, just stay at Aria. Unlike most of the hotels within a hotel, Vidara isn't really more luxurious than Aria. It isn't really that much more exclusive. The rooms are a bit better, but the pool is weaker. And while its location is good, you still have to traverse the Aria to get home at the end of the night. Sometimes the price is better, and if that's your only object, then Vidara isn't a bad place to be. Otherwise, it's probably just easier to stay at the Aria. If you resort to this resort, you'll feel pampered at number 7. Number 6. Signature at MGM Grand. Okay, Signature is a very clear step up from MGM Grand. I'll get the bad news out of the way first. It's attached to the MGM Grand and it doesn't have a casino on its own. So the location is pretty rough and you have to do a lot of walking once you're there. What makes it worth it? Well, everything great about MGM is accessible to you at Signature. The pool, the spa, the gym, all of the MGM Grand's amenities will follow you to the Signature. In addition, they have their own exclusive bars, restaurants, pools, and lounges that are smoke free and away from the chaos of the street. Drip. The rooms are nicer and feature kitchenettes and full fridges without being pre-stocked with a minibar. Oh, and also they have balconies, one of the very few Vegas Strip properties that have balconies in their rooms. The great part is that the rooms are more often than not cheaper than the ones at the MGM Grand, so if you're already willing to walk the full length of the MGM Grand Hotel anyway, then the extra five minutes might be worth a few hundred bucks saved per stay. And if you're getting an Uber or Lyft to the Strip, the Signature has its own valet and taxi entrance, so you don't have to go all all the way through the Grand if you want to leave, giving us more than six great reasons to stay at the number six hotel on the list. Number five. New York, New York. New York, New York, I don't mind waking up in that hotel. For the budget-minded Vegas enthusiast, I can't really think of a better budget option than New York, New York. Its location isn't outstanding, but it's close enough to other properties in the same price range that you won't be disappointed. It caters to a younger party crowd and has a very fun and lively casino atmosphere. It also has an arcade and a roller coaster built into the hotel that patrons of all ages love. It's kind of like Circus Circus, but with a better theme and execution. It doesn't have quite as many high-end dining options as I would like, but it also has a lot more budget options and mid-range options that I enjoy. There's a bar every few feet and room service is actually pretty reasonably priced. The pool is average at best, but that aside, I can see why you guys gave New York, New York the number 5 spot. It's just fun. And isn't that the point of a Vegas hotel and casino? Number 4. Delano and Mandalay Bay. So going forward, none of these hotels have any major issues. Mandalay is probably the best four-star property on the Strip. It's got a built-in aquarium, a tropical theme, and it's pretty darn big. Lots of casino space, a lovely set of pools, including a optional adults-only pool for discerning guests. The rooms are pretty spacious, even the basic ones are over 500 feet. So why isn't Mandalay Bay number one on our list? Well, in short, the location is pretty terrible. That's the only thing wrong with this property. It's at the very end, or beginning, depending on how you look at it, of the Las Vegas Strip. So it can be difficult to casino hop, but if that doesn't bother you, it's a wonderful place to stay, and you'll certainly have a fun place to eat, drink, play, and relax. Number three. Bellagio. Fountains, gardens, pools, and art galleries are everywhere in Bellagio. It's a lovely Italian light-themed property, based around Bellagio. Bellagio is a bit of an expensive property, but it's certainly luxurious, and it has been the gold standard in Vegas for quite some time. The location is outstanding, sitting comfortably mid-strip right next to Caesars Palace. It's ultimately just a really beautiful five-star property. It claims to be an all-sweet hotel, but don't be fooled, it's not exactly all-sweet. It can be a bit more expensive proportionately, and there are more luxurious properties in close proximity to the Bellagio, but the iconic fountains and grace of the hotel seem to shoot it 
firmly in the number three spot in the eyes of our voters. Number two. Mirage, a personal favorite hotel of mine and many other voters in the My Vegas community, and it's easy to see why. First things first, Mirage has a flawless location. It's exactly in the center of the Las Vegas Strip, so it's within walking distance of properties all over the map. It shares a tropical theme with Mandalay Bay and Treasure Island, but unlike those properties, it really capitalizes on them. Just like Mandalay Bay hosts its own aquarium, Mirage has its own zoo and dolphin habitat, but Mirage has a tropical garden in the atrium. It's not the same scale as Bellagio, but it's also pretty great. Another selling point is the size of Mirage. It's still a pretty big hotel, but it's not excessive. It can support multiple pools like Mandalay Bay and MGM Grandu, two of which are adults only, but it's not exhausting to go travel through. Steve Wynn designed this purposefully as to not overwhelm guests, and in turn, keep them coming back for more this way. He also arranged for there to be a pleasant tropical scent pumped through the hotel and casino at all hours a day. It's a great psychological trip that makes people like it better because it smells good. And while their buffet food is decent, it's about the same tier as Bellagio or Mandalay Bay. It also includes free beer, wine, and mimosas with entry, which puts Mirage Buffet ahead of most other buffets on the Strip. There's nothing wrong with Mirage at all. It's exactly what it should be for a four-star property. If anything, it feels like it's aping a five-star property. Mandalay Bay pretends to be a five-star property too, but unlike Mirage, Mandalay pulls it off comfortably. Mirage just feels fancier than it really is. But maybe it's that feeling that sold us on giving the Great Gold Tower the volcanic number two spot. Number one. Aria. Yeah, by process of elimination, it's obvious. Aria is the best MGM hotel and casino on the Las Vegas Strip. It's the newest and a much cleaner one than the vast majority. It's located scenically in city center and boasts one of the best buffets on the Strip, tasty enough to rival Bacchanal and beat out Bellagio's most days. The theming, like most of the top Vegas hotels and casinos, is vaguely modern art and Italian opera based, but the focus is more on luxury and comfort. You see it from the spas to the casino all the way down to the crystal clear waters of the pool. It's mildly more expensive than Vidara, but I've found the cost difference isn't a factor most days, and a number of guests are willing to pay for it for the better location. And it's also more affordable than the neighboring five-star hotels like Waldorf Astoria, Cosmo, and Bellagio. Honestly, I can't find a thing wrong with it if you want a proper five-star Las Vegas Strip experience. It delivers on every front and is easily the strongest hotel that MGM has to offer in Las Vegas. And that's that's why it was voted the number one best MGM Resorts International Hotel on the Las Vegas Strip. So what's your guys' power rankings of the MGM hotels? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below, I'd love to read about them. And if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate the like. Feel free to subscribe, assuming you want to hear from me again. But that's all the time we have today, Spinners and Sharks, Ace of Vegas is signing out, wishing you strong hands and happy spinning.